mass percent composition of compounds. Um, it's helpful to remember a generalized definition for percent. Percent equals the part that you're interested in divided by the whole thing times 100. Mass percent composition, or we often just call it mass percent of an element, is just the element's percentage of the total mass of the compound. So the mass percent of element x, just some mythical element, will be the mass of x in a sample of that compound, that's the part we're interested in, divided by the mass of the entire sample, multiplied by 100. We're treating percent here as a unit. Do not use the percent button on your calculator. You'll get the wrong answer. The percent button on your calculator is for something else. That is a unit percent. So let's look at this example. A 0.358 gram sample of chromium reacts with oxygen to form 0.523 grams of the metal oxide. This is the compound. It's got chromium and oxygen in it together. It's the whole thing. This is the mass of the chromium that went into the compound. So we've got the mass of the chromium and we've got the mass of the compound. To find the mass percent of chromium, we take the mass of chromium, which is 0 0.358 grams, and we divide by the mass of the whole thing, 0.523 grams, we multiply by 100. So 0.358 divided by, divided boy. this is a conflicted child, divided by 0.523 times 100. Um, this would have three significant figures and I'm getting 68.5%. You see what happens to the units here? The units cancel out. So then we're left with no units. And that's why in your book, it uses percent there as a unit. Okay, so it's 68.5%. Let's think about it and see, does it make sense? Is it reasonable? Well, 0.358 is more than half of the whole thing, isn't it? Right? Half of it would be, you know, 0.25 or so, half of 0.5. Half of this is less than that. This is more than half of it. So our percentage should be more than 58, more than 50%. If you use the percent button on your calculator, you're going to come up with 0.685%. Any questions? We can use mass percent as a conversion factor. It doesn't really look like a conversion factor, but it's actually a very convenient conversion factor. We can go between grams of a constituent element and grams of a compound. That's what we were just doing using mole ratios. But if we have the percent, we can use that instead. So they're telling us that the mass percent composition of sodium in sodium chloride is 39%. Percent literally means per 100. This is 39 parts per 100 parts. All percentages are that way. So 39% can be written as 39 grams per 100 grams. That's what 39% means. Well, 39 grams of what? Of the element. It's, it's sodium. So 39 grams of sodium, and it's in sodium chloride. So per 100 grams of sodium chloride. 39% sodium means that out of 100 grams of the whole thing, 39 grams are sodium. This is an awesome relationship. It's a conversion factor. You can write it that way. You can write it upside down. 
You could write it sideways too, but I don't think it would be helpful for anything. So, conversion factor from the percent. The FDA recommends that adults consume less than 2.4 grams of sodium per day. How many grams of sodium chloride can you consume and still be within the FDA guidelines? Sodium chloride is 39% sodium by mass. Does this problem sound familiar? Yeah. Yes, we just solved it a different way. This time they're giving us the percent mass of sodium, so it's going to be faster. So 39% sodium means 39 grams of sodium per 100 grams of the compound. That allows us to go directly from mass of sodium to mass of sodium chloride. So 2.4 grams of sodium. I want grams of sodium chloride on top and grams of sodium on the bottom because I want the units to cancel out. Are you beginning to see that units can be really, really helpful? No answer. It's okay. So, grams of sodium, the number there is 39. 39's down here, 100's on the top. So, I've got 2.4 times 100 divided by 39, and I'm going to come up with 6.2 grams of sodium chloride. Any questions? I have a question. Why isn't it exactly the same as when we calculated it the other way? We got 6.1 before. Now we're getting 6.15, which rounds up to 6.2. Is that a problem? Not really, because this is the uncertain digit. And so if it differs a little bit in the uncertain digit, it just indicates that, you know, it was calculated a little differently. This number that we're using here, 39%, that may look like a whole counting number. It's actually a measurement. It only has two significant figures. If we kn knew this more accurately, we would come out with exactly the same or very close to the same number as we did the other way. There are other ways to solve problems with percentages. If you're good with percentages, you can just whip this out, no problem. But my experience is a lot of students are, are not real happy about percentages because they do involve fractions. No questions? Are you guys awake? <laughs> nod your head, yes. You can't even nod for me. Come on, everybody, nod your heads. Oh, wow. <laughs> Maybe we should pass out rock stars. Um, let's do another one here. If a woman consumes 22 grams of sodium chloride, how much sodium does she consume? Sodium chloride is 39% sodium by mass. Very similar calculation. We're going the other way, though. We're starting with um, the mass of the compound, and we're trying to get to the mass of sodium. So 22 grams of sodium chloride. We want to get grams of sodium. And we need to divide by grams of sodium chloride. This is our conversion factor right here. It's 39 grams of sodium. per 100 grams sodium chloride. So this time the 39's on top and the 100's on the bottom. This should have two significant figures, so I'm going to round it to 8.6 grams of sodium. This woman within the USDA or the FDA guidelines for intake of sodium? No. 
She's way over. Now in one day that's maybe not gonna hurt you, but I wouldn't do that every day.